Hey, podcast listener, even if you are alone in your entrepreneurial pursuit, know that today, right now in your earbuds, you are joined by thousands of entrepreneurs all around the globe seeking to do the same thing you are. If you want to know more about this program or this podcast or want to get barraged by a lot of annoying pop-ups, check out our website, lifestylebusinesspodcast.com. Yeah, buddy, it's Thursday. That means it's time for another LBP, baby, where we believe building a business is the ideal way to create more freedom and opportunity for you, your family, and those around you. It's Thursday morning, and I am joined, as is per usual, by my captain, my co-host, a man who puts the paid into paid internships. Welcome to the show. <laughs> if you guys stick around at the end of the episode, we'll tell you how the best and cheapest way to go on absolute media binge. So we're standing here topless this is a little bit of a sexy episode just got out of the pool i'm a little bit sad because it's the middle of december we both got a bit of a sunburn and i'm gonna get on a plane in two hours to go to new york city and i don't i don't even have a pair of pants leaving the tropics to go hang out in the harsh winter of new york city sorry about that buddy i'm headed to the keys (laughs) i'm not ready to give this up quite yet these are high quality problems as they say the Dynamite Circle is open. If you're a legit location entrepreneur, we welcome you to join our private forum. Our goal in there is to make every member 10000 extra incremental dollars in 2012. Brennan Tully sent me an email this morning and said, done. It's not even 2012 yet, brother. <laughs> yeah, I love those emails. Not only is the Dynamite Circle open, we have also launched Tropical Workforce, which is in full swing. Yep. Yeah, it's free. And uh, guys are posting up jobs there. People are getting jobs there. So if you're a location independent entrepreneur, you have some kind of location independent service to provide. Maybe it isn't location independent. Who cares? Post it up there. Go for it. It's a job board for our community and it's getting tons and tons of action. I haven't looked at the analytics this week, but last week, 1900 visitors. We see the applications and comments. One post up there has 26 comments. I mean, that's more comments than we get on our podcast episodes. That's just phenomenal. And one other big piece of news this week, Ian, is we announced on the Tropical MBA blog that we are going to go transparent. Oh, it's scary as shit. We went back and forth about whether or not we should start to reveal. Basically, I'm sick of saying we do a million dollars. Guys are actually going to know what we do every day. It's going to be kind of weird. Yeah, you know, when we say we do a million dollars, I think people are like, we do it because we want people to say these guys are business guys. Right. These guys are legitimate guys. But what ends up happening, I think, is they're like, these guys are douches. Yeah, I think less emphasis on the million dollars, more emphasis on the process. Right. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with one of our lines of cat furniture. And we're going to actually show what our profit margin is, what our costs are, how many units we sold, all that kind of stuff. And we're just going to sort of pick it, cherry pick product lines just to show people the inside look at how this works. Now, we're not going to go all Pat Flynn and like share our net income and stuff like that. But you guys will be able to do the math. Yeah, the (laughs) the goal is to share with people how to build a business online. That's it. And for people, I think a lot of people, a lot of internet entrepreneurs have come to us in the last year and said, hey, man, I'm looking to get out of the internet marketing game. I want to get into products. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times I've heard somebody say, hey, man, I want to get into products. So we're going to unwrap it. We're going to show you how to get into products. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, obviously, there's a huge risk for us, and this is a bit against potential wisdom. But we're doing this because we think it's a bigger opportunity. I mean, I think if we put ourselves out there, we could hurt our business, but we also could explode our business. So I don't know. Why not play with fire? Let's see how it goes. Speaking of products, Ian, today we sat down with fellow DCer Matt Kowalik, a guy who knows a cra- metric crap ton about China. He's been living there for seven or eight years now. He says, yes. on, he says on the interview, um, if you guys have any questions about China, sourcing, the consumer market there, Matt's super knowledgeable. Legal he's, issues over there in China. Yeah, he's, he's, he speaks Mandarin. He, he's totally well-informed guy, and he's very helpful. So if you guys have any questions, I'm sure Matt would be happy to help you out. Let's get on to the interview. All right, everybody, we've got DC here on the line, Matt Kowalik. Uh, Matt's actually a guy who's helped us out quite a bit. Matt, thanks for joining us today. Where are you joining us from? Right now I'm in hazy, lovely Shenzhen in Guangdong province of southern China, just across the border from Hong Kong. So uh, looking out my balcony across the lovely southern China, South China Sea to uh, Hong Kong right now. Beautiful, Matt. And give us a little bit of background on you. Well, I moved to China. I was always kind of... I don't know. I always felt like I didn't really fit in very well in the U.S. Uh, when I finished university, I was 
really confused about what I was going to do. And uh, I saw an advertisement for a company that was looking for teachers. Actually, it was a program through the University of Memphis that was looking for teachers in southern China. And uh, I signed up for it right away just to see the world a little bit, get out of Michigan. Now, Matt, um, you've, been, uh, you've been in China the past couple of years manufacturing clothing. Is that correct? I've been in China the last seven years manufacturing everything. Clothing is just where I've kind of settled over the last couple of years. And so basically what your firm does for people is it solves that complicated problem of they want to manufacture in China, but they don't want to set up an operation there. So they call guys like you to do the sourcing for you, basically. Is that correct? Basically, we're like a project management company. We specifically chose garments because it's not like a product that you open a mold for and you can pump out 10,000 pieces a day and they're all basically the same. And with garments, there's a lot more variance piece to piece. So it makes it more difficult to control. And fashion people have a tough time communicating with people that speak English as their native language. So trying to speak with a manufacturer directly in China from their office in London or New York rarely works out well. We just try to make that process a little bit smoother. Both of our managers here, all of our people here, even our Americans all speak Chinese fluently. So it makes the process a lot smoother. Sweet. So by the way, I was just going to say, speaking of hazy skylines, if you guys haven't been to China yet, it's very difficult to imagine what Matt's talking about, but the pollution is absolutely overwhelming. Just imagine the sun never coming out. <laughs> All right, Matt, today we're going to talk about three strategies for getting started with products. A lot of internet marketers, which is our audience, a lot of travelers are seeing the advantage to physical products. One of the advantages of physical products is that the cash flows seem to be more sustainable. If you do identify a good product line and a good e-commerce store, those tend to last. I mean, they can stick around for 5, 10, 15 years, and, and people want that. They want that security. And yeah, I think you're the guy that can help us. So here are the three strategies we're going to talk about. Uh, the first one is Alibaba.com. The second one is dealing with middlemen, guys like you. And the third way is actually showing up and knocking on doors. So let's get started with the first one. If people just go onto Alibaba.com and start looking for manufacturers there, what's your experience with that website? I mean, how legit are the manufacturers that signed up and put their products there? Are they mostly middlemen on that site? What's the deal? Alibaba, I don't know if you guys have heard about this at all, but there was a bit of a scandal last year with their, uh, their gold member, quote unquote, gold member service basically just being something that manufacturers can pay a little bit of extra money for and acquire, which is kind of common in China. If you're going to go for a specific product and, and look at Alibaba as a solution, it's not impossible to find good quality manufacturers on there. But you got to realize that there are going to be a lot of middlemen. You're going to have to wade through a lot more junk. And you need to sample with multiple suppliers to make sure that you find somebody that really is a manufacturer. You need to make sure that they can walk through the process and show you that they know what they're talking about. A lot of the times you'll get salespeople that will just copy pictures of, of popular products and throw them on an Alibaba site like and ours. sell them from their little, <laughs> yeah, sell them from their little apartment in the middle of nowhere. And then you might get a product, but then you lose control over the manufacturing process. You can't alternate the specifications. You can't make any tweaks. Um, you're really stuck with whatever they give you. And if there are any problems after you pay, those guys are not going to be helpful at all. So, and you're not really building a long-term relationship with uh, an actual manufacturer, which is very important in China. So I think Alibaba is uh, generally, or can be a good first step to show up into China. So it, it can be the process that you kind of use to, to a roadmap to when you're showing up to China. You did point out a very important point here, which is that there's a difference between agents and factories. And a lot of times people in China pass themselves off as a factory when they're merely just an agent. And they're incentivized to do this because uh, they can potentially make a lot of money being an agent. And the problem is if you're going through an agent, you're essentially going through a middleman, which is going to cut into your profits. Speaking of cutting into profits, well, that's our second point. So where in comes the difference, Matt, when somebody makes the jump from going from Alibaba, trying to avoid middlemen, to actually calling up a middleman like you on the phone? How do you decide when to make that jump? 
once you can define your products and you define your product specifications, you know exactly what you're looking for. You look for a middleman that adds value and has a clearly defined value proposition. We add value by facilitating communication. We're on the ground in China. If there's a problem, we can literally drive out to the factory that same day. And those are things that are added value. If you've got some guy in his apartment that's not going to provide any service and is just middlemaning a product and marketing it up and, and, and selling it to you from whatever factory, they're not really adding that much value. If they don't facilitate communication with you, if they're not helping you make any changes, any tweaks, all of those things kind of, they're not really adding that, that value. When you are looking for a middleman, make sure that they understand that you know that they're a middleman. That can be very important in itself. Just as a ballpark, you know, if I'm going to buy a half container full of garments, what kind of margin differential, like how much margin are you going to add on top of that for the, your services in general? In general, probably somewhere between 10 to 15%. Okay. Where do you guys hang out on the internet? If people are like, oh, you know, 15% is totally worth having a middleman providing services on the ground. Where do middlemen hang out? Where do you find you guys? Well, there's a lot of clothing forums. We're trying to get more active in that. We've got our website, which we redid, uh, which still doesn't look that great. Um, and that's highcappen.com? Yes, that's our main garment site. There's other firms that just kind of focus on just doing a process in China. One of the guys that we work with is the China Sourcing Information Center, CSIC, and they kind of offer a, a, a wide range of products. Fairly high uh, barrier to entry to working with them, but there's a lot of other kind of firms that will offer that type of sourcing. Basically, you're going to search for kind of sourcing sourcing help. There's a lot of people that are offering similar services, but I think the key is you want to look for somebody that's got an office in China that's on the ground in China. It's tough to run a sourcing center from Washington State and uh, be able to add that value to your services. However, I would add this, and this is a hack that we've just kind of implemented in our company. We hired a designer that speaks both Chinese and English. And that's been really important for us. So I do recommend Very if you have a company uh, in the United States or, or a Western company, it could make sense for you to hire somebody that speaks Chinese. That's been a huge advantage for yeah. us. All right. Speaking of speaking Chinese, the third way that we've suggested on this show that you can get started manufacturing in China is to show up and start knocking on doors. What is even a strategy for that? I mean, I know that sounds crazy, Matt, but if someone was just to go there and start Getting into the China scene, where do you start? Do you start in Shanghai? Do you start in Shenzhen? How do you how do you even do something like that? What China does really well is they drive down the price because you get what we call a manufacturing cluster. So certain areas are a lot better at doing certain products, certain types of products. So Shenzhen is kind of a manufacturing cluster for electronics. Shanghai is the area where they do a lot of garment. So certain areas will do certain products and even down to, you know, little towns like one town will make all of the all of the shoelaces in China and right, all of right. the neighboring cities will all do the supplying for that. So it's good in a couple of ways. It's good for buyers because it turns into a super, super cutthroat, low margin business for them. And it's super efficient because they're just pumping out the same product all of the time. So there's not a ton of difference between the suppliers quality wise or price wise. And but it also makes it I mean, I, I don't know how anybody in the world would compete with most of these manufacturing clusters because they're so efficient. The price is driven down so low. You're absolutely right. Yeah, Matt. I would so say you can basically show up in the town. If you know this is the shoelace capital of China, you can basically show up in a town and visit 10 factories in two days. Uh, another thing to point out when you're visiting those factories, a lot of times you can get free samples of products. They'll take yeah. you on a tour, which is no problem. It really does make sense if you're if you're focused on a specialized product to try and figure out where in China that product gets manufactured because a lot of times, like you said, uh, it's eerie, but there are towns that specialize in certain products. Yeah, and they'll even take you out to lunch. I mean, it could be a good time if you're <laughs> hanging out in Southeast Asia. Take a little tour in China. Uh, That's not bad at all, Matt. You know, one of the things I talk to a, a lot of guys in China. And uh, there's a lot of guys in the D.C. that are doing things like importing wine and this kind of stuff. There's one billion souls that are rapidly getting richer. Everybody's talking a lot about the biggest consumer market in the world. I'm curious to see if you could name for us two or three opportunities that you see emerging in the China market right now. Well, again, with Chinese and selling to Chinese, you need to have a very solid value proposition. You need to really be able to explain clearly what you're selling and, and what they're getting for your product. 
the Chinese are some of the best bargainers in the world, and it's a sport to them to see you know who can get the better price for for the same product. <laughs> I would say right now what we're seeing a huge boom in here is is, uh, is English teaching and and it's got it's flowed to me a couple of months you know when when our business wasn't great teaching English on the ground I know people that only do that and make really good salaries teaching you know 15 hours a week that's always going to be huge so educational services facilitating Chinese leaving China and going to learn in other areas food products Chinese are very worried about their food safety importing food into China is a great market luxury goods also very be huge in the future is very targeted very targeted products again you know you don't want to look at selling to everybody in China but pick out a small niche pick out 25 to 30 year old unmarried Chinese office workers and and target them specifically and there's um, 300 million of do them. some <laughs> <laughs> yes, there's 300. There's more of them than there are Americans. So yeah. So talk to somebody. I saw uh, Michael Michelini in uh, the Tropical Workforce looking for China uh, research. You know, somebody like him or somebody like me. You know, I've been in China for seven years, man. I mean, all my girlfriends are, have been Chinese. A bunch of my friends have been Chinese. Um, so I can shoot from the hip and give people a pretty good idea if they if they have any questions. So Matt, what's the best place for people to get in touch with you if they have any questions about manufacturing in China? Hi Cap'n is fine. Email address is on there. Our info at Hi Cap'n goes straight to my inbox. So hit me up. Cheers, Matt. Thank Great. you. All right, that was great stuff. Again, you guys can get in contact with Matt at HiCappen dot com. One quick, quick tip: I am doing the classic routine before I go traveling, Ian. I'm going to be on an airplane for an amount of time that's just seems indefinite media stock up i'm doing a media binge and i just found out we just got these new slick kindles and it turns out that you can get books for free Ooh. i'm like an old guy and i find out about this stuff late so there's this program called caliber it works for the windows and the mac and it's basically like a library program that transfers moby and epub files on and off of your kindle it's like a little just like a library and you can get torrent files. You can type in any popular author. Like, I'm a big Ernest Hemingway fan. In fact, Ernest Hemingway is like a great author for entrepreneurs who like to adventure. If you like to have a backpack on your back and a laptop in your lap and just making it happen in some random place in Cambodia, Ernest Hemingway is your guy, I think. It's Follow. very romantic. So you can type in Ernest Hemingway torrent. This is, might be illegal. Dot Moby, dot epub or whatever. And boom, use Caliber, all that stuff's on your Kindle, and your plane ride is all Hemingway'd up. Hey, ask Hemingway if he cares. <laughs> Tell me what he says. <laughs> oh, zing. Hey, you know, one quick thing before we get off the podcast. We got four new iTunes reviews this week. Cue the applause effect. Thanks so much to Hannah Blue Pottery for saying we motivate her. Thanks to Dave Norcott. Talk to Dave Norcott, iPhone developer. That guy's real sharp. He says he feels his brain expanding. That's how I felt when I talked to Dave. Wow. Interesting. Steve in Florida says he listens to us while he jogs. I love that. I just love imagining Steve listening to these two jokers talk about business. I love it, Steve. Thanks for the five-star review. And we got Articoil. Articoil says in an immeasurable depth and breadth of information five stars booyah thanks everybody for listening to the lbp we'll catch you next thursday as always stateside hey everybody thanks for listening don't be shy we've got a mailing list lifestylebusinesspodcast.com go there get yourself signed up and we'll keep you up to date on everything 